Hey guys and welcome back to another PyQt5 tutorial. So in today's video we're going to be talking about combo boxes which essentially are those little boxes that give you the options between multiple things and you can kind of select which one you want. They're all over the place, super useful, that's what we're going to be learning about today. Now before I continue, if you're watching this video recently, you may want to sign up for my new course, The Fundamentals of Programming with Python. Right now to celebrate its kind of new release, it's 50% off. You can get the discount code just by looking in the description. Now, if you are a little bit later to this video, you may still be able to get it discounted for 35% off. That code will be down below as well. Um, and this is just teaching kind of the fundamentals of Python programming. But anyways, check that out if you guys are interested. Just feel like I'd let you know in case you want to take advantage of that discount. All right, so let's talk about combo boxes now. So what I'm gonna do is drag in a combo box from the side here, and I'm just gonna kind of set a size for it right now and make it nice and large. Now I'm gonna rename this to be combo X, and I'm gonna change the size of the text to be much larger because obviously this is a bigger combo box. Now I'm just gonna copy this bad boy and paste it and rename this one instead of combo X2, it'll be combo Y. Now what I'm gonna do with this kind of example is create an X or function using our combo boxes. Now an X or function is really basic. You've probably heard of it. Uh, this is the truth table for X or. So essentially you have two inputs which are gonna be represented by our combo boxes there. You can either choose between zero or one. So a binary input and then you get one binary output. Now you can see here if both of the inputs are zero, you get zero. If Y is one, you get one. If X is one, you get one. Uh, and if X and Y and both are both one, you get zero. So it stands for exclusive or pretty straightforward. I'm sure most of you have probably heard of that. But anyways, these are our combo boxes. Now, if we want to add some different options to our combo boxes, we can do this from the QT designer by simply double clicking on the box and clicking this add button. Now our items are going to be what we can select from. So in this case, I'm just going to put zero and I'm going to put one. Now, if I do that and I go, okay, you can see that zero shows up in the box here. So I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing here and go zero and one. Now, if we wanted to change which one was by default uh, selected, we can do that by simply moving the one up here above the zero, just by hitting that up arrow key. And now you can see that one is default selected. Now I'm going to move that back for now, but that's how you change which one is by default selected. I'm going to show you this from code as well. So now that we have that, what I'm going to do is actually add a button that we can use to kind of submit this and get the results to the function. So to do that, I'm going to find a button wherever those are. I guess there's one right here. We'll make this one a little bit bigger too, and I'll just call this one submit. Now we can change the font size, make that a little bit larger. So we'll go 22 and just name this submit. And the last thing I'm going to do is just grab a label from down here. I'm going to make this again a little bit bigger and I'm just going to say X, X or Y equals, and then we'll put the result there and I'll make this font size a bit bigger too. And what we're doing here is we're going to say that this input is X and this input is Y. So when we say X, X or Y, that'll give us the answer to, you know, that truth table that we just showed you. So anyways, I'm going to save this. Uh, we'll just save it as test.ui, put that into our PyQt tutorials, which is right here and we'll just override that other one. Okay, sweet, so we have that now, and it, now it's time to actually start working with the code. So the first thing that we have to do, like always, is convert this um, UI file into an actual Python file. So we can do that using pyuic5 hyphen x test.ui hyphen o and then test.py. Uh, pyuic, well, it's pyuic5, and now we will open up that file and start working. So I'm just gonna open up a new subline text window here. So file, new window, and we'll open up that file quickly. Just give me one second here. PyQt, test, there we go. All right, so if we run this, we can see this is what our kind of thing is right now. So we're gonna start immediately by just showing how these combo boxes work. And you can see that you can kind of select between zero or one, and you can have one or the other as that option. So now what we're gonna do is find out how we can get which one is selected and then obviously change the label when they hit submit to be you know the correct thing. So the first thing I'm gonna show you is actually how you change the or add items to the combo box. Now this is important because sometimes you wanna change what's in the combo box from code. So I'm gonna show you how to do that quickly. Now this is actually really easy and all you have to do is just get the name of your combo box. In this case, mine is combo X and then just do dot add item. So I've named my combo box combo X. I'm gonna do self dot combo X dot add item and say I wanna add another item at the bottom called hello. I can go ahead and do that by just hitting hello 
are typing in hello and now you can see that we have another option which is hello so super straightforward if you want to add another item now if you want to change the default item that it's um, selected from code this is a little bit more complicated but I'm going to show you because it's something that you probably want to do sometimes and the way you do that is you're going to say index equals this is this is two line code here that you have to use and I actually have to find it because I forget exactly what it is but it is self dot combo x dot and this is find text and then in here we're going to put the text that we want to find now this will be whatever is showing up in our combo box now if you put something here that doesn't actually that's not an item in your combo box so like one zero hello those are all items in our combo box but say i put something that's not there maybe negative five or negative one this is going to return to you i believe negative one which means that that item was not found in the combo box anyways let's look for zero right now or actually let's change it to hello and what I'm going to do after this is put a comma and type this kind of ridiculous line but this is what we need to do so qt core dot qt dot match fixed string like that now what this is actually going to do here is return to us the index that that item is in our combo box and the way that we select what item we want to use in our combo box is we say set default item or whatever it is here and we give it an index and that index could be zero one two whatever it is where zero is the first item in our combo box and two would be the last one in our case so what i'm going to do here is just say self dot combo x dot set i believe it is current index and then here we're going to put index now the reason i'm doing this in two lines is because sometimes you have a lot of items in your combo box and you don't want to have to count like which one it is or maybe it's going to change position somehow so we're just going to search for the text in our combo box we're going to find what index that's at so some number value and then we're going to set that index to be the current index of our combo box so watch now when i run this the default item is hello now i'll show you if i want to change the default item to be one what i can actually do here is put one not because that's the value of the item because that's the index of our item and i'll, I'll explain this in a second but you can see that zero is actually going to be index zero because the first item one is going to be index one and hello is going to be index two. So now again, if I change this to be two and I mean, I'll close these first and I run this again, you can see that we have hello showing up as well as our current index. Um, so anyways, I'm going to get rid of that because we don't need that, but I just wanted to show you how to do that. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is create a method here that's going to actually change the label and find out what our combo box value is. So I'm just going to call this pressed and we'll take self here. And then inside of here, I'm going to show how we can figure out what item our combo box is on. So to do that is pretty straightforward as well. We can do self dot combo X, maybe the one we want to look at dot current text. And this will just give us what the current text of our item is or our combo box. So I'll do the same thing for combo Y. And all I'll do here is when we click that button, I'll just print it out. And then we'll talk about that XOR thing in a second. So I'm just going to link my button now to that method. We've done this so many times. We'll say self dot in this case, submit dot clicked dot connect self dot pressed. All right, so let's give this a try here. Let's run this. And you can see we now get zero zero printing out when I click that because we printed the current text of our combo box. I can do one. We can get one zero, right? Pretty straightforward. So now let's change that label so that it's equal to the actual answer to that XOR function. All right, so the first thing we need to do is evaluate our XOR function. Now I'm going to show you kind of a cool way to do this. The first thing we're going to do is actually stop by printing this and set these equal to their int values. Now, this is because they by default come in as string to us, uh, but I want them as an integer so that I can actually use um, the or and ands in Python to evaluate the XOR function. So XOR, which I'm just going to say is this, is actually equal to um, X or not Y and not x or y or sorry not x and y what am i saying not or we need to change these ors to and now i'm going to put brackets around these to make sure everything is nice and clear and i'm going to explain kind of how this works but essentially the only time that this function is going to be one is when um is when one of them is on and one of them is off or one is one and one is zero so the way this works we say if x and not y or right here 
not x and y. So that's going to give us the result of our XOR. So now if I want to change my label text to show that, what I'm going to say is self dot label dot set text. And in here, I'm actually going to set it equal to the current label text. So label dot text plus in this case, we'll do a space and then I'm going to do the string of x or which will either be a zero or a one. Now, let's just try this and see if it works. First of all, so we'll submit that and you can see zero and zero gives us zero one and zero actually gives us zero true. Oh, it's going to keep going forward <laughs> anyways. Uh, and one one will give us true. And then if I go zero, it, it's not showing because it's cutting off. So what I should probably do is set this equal to actually rather than the current label text, we'll just do x, x or y equals like that. Anyway, so let's try this now. If we have one and zero, we get true. If we have one and one, we get false. If we have zero and one, we get one. Sometimes we're getting one, sometimes we're getting true, which is kind of weird. But anyways, that is kind of how that works. Now, this is just weird because it's returning true or false. If we wanted to just get a one or a zero, all we could say is if x or equals equals true, then we'll say x or equals one else x or equals zero. And now if we run this and we do one zero, we get one. If we do one one, we get zero. If we do zero one, we get one. And you kind of see how that works. Anyways, I just want to put a, get, put together a little example for you guys so I didn't just show you kind of the basics of the combo box. In the next video, we'll probably move on to doing check boxes or radio boxes or something else. And then as we progress through the series, we'll get into some more advanced examples as well as some layouts and some other stuff because there's so much to talk about with PyQt5. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you do, make sure you leave a like and I will see you guys in another video.